StallionEsearch.com presents a look at the career of legendary quarter horse jockey G.R. Carter Jr. Well, what the hell is a driving factor? You know, I uh, I grew up in a in a rodeo family. You know, uh, sports oriented. I rodeoed, wrestled, and uh, was in gymnastics. And uh, it just I had you know I had to, I was I had that drive installed in me, that competitive drive as a kid, and uh, I actually started galloping racehorses the summer after eighth grade. It was my first job I ever had, just just to make spending money and to, I guess, support my rodeo habit. And uh, I never dreamed at that point, you know, where it would take me. And, and, and I really didn't even plan on making a career out of it until I was about a senior in high school, and I'd already been riding races on weekends at the small tracks, Eureka, in Kansas, Blue Ribbon Downs, Ada, rode some brush track races and uh, Claremore on Wednesday nights when I first rode some of those when I was 14, that right just right after I started. But, but uh, whenever I did, I won some races as a, in high school and won a couple of fraternities when I was a senior in high school. Won the Blue Stem Spring fraternity at Eureka, won the uh, Thanksgiving Juvenile at Blue Ribbon Downs, and. Uh, those couple, those little small fraternities like that, made me realize, you know, how how well I could do and how much money I could make, and uh, I just made that commitment. About the about the same time was when uh, you're having to apply for your scholarships and admission to to school. I had every intention of going to school at Oklahoma State. My dad graduated from Oklahoma State with a degree in animal science, and uh, I had every intention of going to Oklahoma State, going through the animal science ag department maybe eventually being a vet or something something horse related been around horses my whole life and i had in, every intention of including them in my life in some way little did i know it would be as a jockey but uh whenever i made that commitment to be a jockey i threw my heart and soul into it wait till i got out of high school moved to salisaw the rest is history. So obviously you had the size to be a jock was there the one single person that says you know what you have the size you have the, the athletic ability you might want to be, think about being a jockey. Can you remember that person that suggested that, or we, was it? you know, there's 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 two or three people that uh, you know around home that just really pushed me towards that. Uh, a guy that uh, one of the trainers I rode for when I very first started galloping horses, a guy named uh, Gene Heron. He passed away here a few years ago, and uh, he even when I was little kid, eight up to f till that time I started galloping horses, he I remember him pump pushing dad. You know that boy, he's he's the right size and he's Got the horse background. You need to, you need to get him involved in it. And uh, whenever I did, he he had me gallop horses for him and work horses. The first guy that I actually galloped a horse for and taught me how to to uh, hold my reins, cross my reins, and do the small things, you know, that that, that every gallop boy jockey's got to know, was a was a, an ex jockey that rode for Gene Heron, and the guy's name was Jerry Daly. Jerry uh, uh, rode Pacific Dan, which was a horse Gene Heron trained which was a champion, I believe, three-year-old Gildan in the early 70s. And uh, Jerry, uh, he helped me a lot. I galloped for him and uh, just the local guys there around Pahuska at Osage Downs. And uh, whenever I got a little bit older, when about the time I was 16, I started galloping for a guy named Bill Lau, L-A-U. He, uh, he worked for, uh, for, uh, for Don Hughes from uh, Ena, the guy that I owned a ranch there at Pahuska. They had a they had a farm stable out there at Hughes Birch Creek Ranch, and Bill Lau was really the guy that really you know exposed me to 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 all the little things at the track that I was going to need to know. And I I worked for him for uh, three summers, you know, even actually just two summers. The summer after uh, my freshman year in high school and my sophomore year, summer after my sophomore year. Did it all, cleaned stalls, groomed, galloped horses, rode races. <laughs> I, I worked for them. Even uh, made it to where I didn't, uh, my uh, my uh, last two years of high school, my junior and senior year, they fixed, well, I didn't have a, a first hour to where I galloped, started galloping horses at 7 o'clock, galloped probably half a dozen. I don't remember exact every day, and you know, then was at school by, uh, by 9. And uh, Bill Lau uh, really, I can remember him telling me, you know, all the little things. Like even when I wasn't, didn't have my heart and soul into being a jockey, it was just still kind of a job for me. I remember him telling me, "Son, you'll make it. You, you got it. I see you got what you're taking on, but you're going to have to focus on, on, on being a rider and, you know, give up that rodeo and more or less, you know." And uh, 
Bill got killed when I was a senior uh, in a car wreck, and uh, he's probably the one person that I would, uh, you know, think about and more or less wish that he had saw what you know what I have accomplished because he uh, he did a lot for me and really, uh, you know, and he and he really saw what I what what I thought I was capable of, and and he you know he has. He got killed very young, and he didn't get to see what I actually have accomplished. Why quarter horse? Why not thoroughbreds? You know, that's that's uh, a good question too. Uh, my granddad, Red Carter, always had a, a race horse or two. He always had a brood mare, and he'd usually have one in training with someone. My dad uh, always had a horse in training, and I, after uh, I got old enough and started galloping, Dad actually gathered up a few more horses. And looking back on, I see re the reason why he did was to give me more opportunities to ride more races. And uh, and me and my sisters, they we both helped at the barn. He had a small stable, you know, four or five horses that we took care of, and. Uh, and I was just around the quarter horse deal, grew up following it. I actually started following it more so after I started galloping, you know, watched the All-American Dream about doing things like that and all. But then after I moved to Southsaw, I rode both breeds and did did reasonably well with both and uh, had a lot of success at Southsaw. Blue Ribbon Downs was, it was, it was wonderful to me. It, there was a lot of, a lot of horses there, a lot of good people. And uh, I, I did well with both breeds. And then I got to a point whenever, uh, you know, I needed to further my career. I'd done about everything I could sell, so I had to make a decision to go with that point, whether to go with thoroughbreds or quarter horses. And I knew if I, wherever I went, that I wanted to try and go and try and be the best. You know, if I was going to ride thoroughbreds, I needed to go to the East Coast or West Coast. And if I wanted to ride quarter horses and do as good as I could, you know, guy needed to make it to Riadosa for the summer. But the track that ran year round primarily at that time that was, you know, the quality racing is Los Alamitos. If you could, if you could ride, at Los Alamitos against that jock colony out there, you know, you you were you were destined to make it to Rio Dosa even from there. You know, there was whenever I went out to Rio Do to to Los Alamitos there at the end of 1990. That's when I made the commitment to go with the Cold Horse deal. You know, and another another deciding factor to throw my heart and soul in the Cold Horse game was, you know, I I, I could saw that to ride thoroughbreds I'd really need to be six seven pounds lighter. A guy I'd need to tack about 15 to go really compete well at, at the big time thoroughbred tracks, Belmont Park or, you know, Gulfstream or Santa Anita. And at the time I was I was I was having to watch my weight to do 18, 19, 20 and I, I just didn't want to have to make that commitment to to live the lifestyle that I would have to. I didn't want to do anything to hurt my body. And uh the quarter horses, the scale weights is, you know, five, six pounds heavier. And uh I, I haven't I have no regrets, you know, looking back because, you know, it it's been just immensely good to me. I've, I did never dream that I could have accomplished or, you know, met the kind of had the kind of career that I've had when I started. But uh, but it's 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 great, and I'm glad I did go with quarter horses. When you first started your career and you first started getting momentum going, when did you realize you're in deep water? You're in the the company of the top riders in the world. When, take me back to that moment. You know, I, it, Sal saw, I, did, I did so good over there. I won so many races, and I, I got to ride for the leading trainers at Sal saw Rex Brooks. I'll be grateful to him forever. I won my, my first grade one type races for Rex, the Heritage, a couple times in 88 and 89. Don Drake, all those guys that I rode so many races for at Sal saw and did so much good for. But whenever I went to, to Los Alamitos in the in the end of 1990, when I went out there, you know, there were still so many of the great riders were still riding were right there. I caught the tail end of a lot of those guys' careers. James Lackey, Steve Treasure, John Crager, Kenny Hart, uh, Kip Dederson, all those guys, Danny Cardoza, all those guys were still there riding. And I got to, uh, I got to, to ride against them and I got to watch their styles and the things that they did that made them great. And, uh, I can't, I can't say that I really patterned myself after any one individual, but uh, one guy that I really did like his style a lot that that ended up riding a little longer. Some of the first guy's name was Bruce Pilkington. He actually locked right beside me, and I saw that that Bruce uh, kind of his style. And I never really patterned myself after any one person, but I learned a lot from a lot of different guys. Like I rode against Jackie. Of course, he was the guy that was riding in this area whenever I was first riding. It was. And uh, my father-in-law Jerry Burgess was even right. He rode up through 
87. I even rode a few races against him when I first got out of high school or in high school. And uh, But when I was at Los Alamitas, riding against those guys and was doing reasonably well right off when I first went out there. I was fortunate enough to get with with uh, a good agent out there, uh, Terry Terry Morse. Uh, he had Danny Cardoza's book at the time, so I got to ride a lot of Danny's seconds, and I went to winning a lot of races there that first winter of 1990-91, uh, and uh, did well enough there at the, the last two-thirds of that winter meet to know that, that that's where I needed to go to to really polish my riding style. So uh, during the break there, I moved out of my house at Salisaw, went out and stayed and lived primarily in California and rode out there for three years. And uh, it did so many good things for me because I got to know all the all the trainers on the West Coast and I already almost knew, knew everybody, especially in Oklahoma. A lot of the uh, trickle over guys from Texas and uh, a lot of people from both places end up going to Rio Dosa. And, uh, me doing so well at Los Alamitas like I did, you know, opened other people's eyes and it got, you know, I guess more of, a, more of a name, more of a national name than just that kid from Oklahoma that was, had done so well at Salisaw. And uh, I made another great decision whenever I decided to come back, back to Oklahoma at the end of uh, the 93 season because uh, I kind of studied it and I saw that there were so many of the people that came from Remington so many of the horses from Remington end up going to Rio Dose, and that's what I want to do. And I came back, and it worked out well for me because I ended up getting in with Jack Brooks and, and got to ride for Jack and there for about five years. Mm -hmm.